Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Coming up, we're joined by Microsoft 365 CVP, Jared Spataro, to look at Microsoft Productivity Score, a new service that can help you accelerate your digital transformation by providing insights into how your organization works. So, Jared, welcome to the show, and congrats on the Microsoft Productivity Score launch. Thanks, Jeremy. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So you've really been at the center of modern work approaches for years, spanning SharePoint and OneDrive, the Office apps, and more recently, Microsoft Teams. You've got a pretty unique perspective, I think, in terms of enabling people to work better. So what are we solving for then with Productivity Score? Well, with Microsoft 365 in the cloud, we're just constantly evolving and delivering new capabilities to scale to meet your needs. And we want everyone to be able to really harness these tools to help them digitally transform their organizations. So this really starts with being aware of how your organization works and how technology is an enabler of productivity. And in a world of digital everything, this just isn't IT's job any longer, it's everyone's job. So today, many organizations have individuals or teams dedicated to helping people leverage technology to make it easier to get work done. And Productivity Score is a tool that gives them one place for end-to-end -end visibility. It includes insights, peer benchmarks, and actions they can take to help the people in their organization be more productive. Pretty exciting stuff. Great, and if you think about it, uh, until now it was primarily up to IT to really gauge the level of digital transformation by looking at things like basic software usage, the number of emails sent, or the meetings that they've joined, or files that are stored in OneDrive. So this service then really enables and expands that effort. Yeah, that's exactly right, it does. Anyone focused on technology adoption for their organization can use this, and I love that. Let me just show you for a second what the experience looks like. So first, you can find Productivity Score right here under Reports in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. When I click into it, I see a dashboard with a set of categories. And in the upper right, you see your score on a percentage scale. And as you'll see in the score breakdown, it comprises both the people experiences and technology experiences. And one thing to point out here, you can see how your score trends over time, and that's really important. For example, I can see that every category is jumping in March and April, and that makes a lot of sense given the shift to remote work we saw in those months. That led to a lot more online meetings and file sharing. Right, and the trend line is also a great way to judge impact of IT initiatives or training or other things that might have moved the dial. You know, it is. The trend line is a good pulse check on how well modern work approaches are being adopted by your people. But let's dig in just a little bit further. Here at the top, you see people experiences, which is a set of measures for how the organization is working. At the bottom, we have technology experiences, which helps you understand how technology can better assist you and more on that in just a minute. Now I'll scroll back up and dig into the people experiences. These are organized around five categories, as you see laid out here on the screen. And across each, we show you where you are today, the trend over the last six months, and how you compare to peers in your industry. Pretty powerful stuff. Looking at each category, we see first communication, then meetings, content collaboration, teamwork, and finally mobility. And it's a great and comprehensive view. All these areas are really showing us kind of information at the aggregate level, but what's underneath that? Well, sure. Now from here, we can explore each of these categories for more information and insights. So I'll click into communication. I wanna go deep on communication because it's so important, especially right now. And of course, people have very different communication needs. At the top, you can see the number of people leveraging multiple communication modes. And then to the right, we see the trend over time. All right, so now let's dig into meetings. A huge focus right now for everyone with remote and hybrid work. If I click right in, you'll see ways to improve the quality of online meetings so you can recommend best practices to save time. And here you can see things like, are people turning on their cameras to create better human connections? Or are they using screen sharing to help everyone get on the same page during meetings? And on the right, we can see the types of meetings that they're setting up. You can see, for example, if they're scheduled meetings or ad hoc meetings, which in the past few months has kind of become the, the alternative to doing a, a flyby or a, a drop-in on someone's office. And looking to the next category, content collaboration on files in the cloud goes hand in hand with meetings as people review and work together on more content that's digitally stored than ever before. And it's super important, I think, in terms of that collaboration, because we can all relate to the cases where maybe a dozen people are reviewing and working on a file. They send all their changes to you, then you've got to kind of reconcile, that, consolidate that, and put that into one file. Absolute chaos, and it can cost you a lot of time. By collaborating in the cloud, we've seen that you can save up to 100 minutes or almost two hours per week, and who couldn't use that? In fact, if we click into content collaboration, we can get more insights on how people are choosing to share and work together in files. Here on the second card, you see how people are sharing files in email, 
whether they're sending old school attachments or sharing links to SharePoint and OneDrive hosted files, which of course is a more modern and secure approach. And then my favorite here on the right shows the ranges of how many files per person people are sharing, co-authoring, as well as collaborating together using those at mentions, which we all know can improve response rates by directly requesting actions or feedback from specific people. Right, so in addition to collaboration, teamwork is here its own distinct category. So can you explain what's behind that? Absolutely, one of my favorite categories. It's an area I'm particularly excited about. Here in teamwork, you see how many people are engaged in shared workspaces along with the trend over time. On the left, you can see how much teamwork is happening in shared mailboxes, also in messages with teams, and even content collaboration on files and SharePoint team sites. And in the middle tiles, you can see engagement based on the size of the shared workspace and how frequently specific groups are getting together, as well as which tools they're using. Right, and these shared workspaces have been pivotal for our team, really, as they bring the benefits, really, of that physical shared workspace into the digital realm and make sure that everybody stays connected. Yeah, and it's been great to see these virtual shared workspaces bring people together over the past few months. It's definitely a durable trend that will stick with us even post-pandemic. Now, the last people experiences category I want to show you is mobility. Again, we'll do a little diving into the product. Here you can see this great breakdown of people using more than one platform. This goes across desktop, mobile apps, or browsers and helps us gauge whether people are working across different devices. And below you'll find how different experiences are being accessed with Outlook, Teams, the Microsoft 365 apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. And then you get this amazing view that shows you where people are working from and whether they're remote or on site. And it shows how all of that has trended over time. And these are really super useful insights to help you make technology decisions based on where people are working from, which kind of brings us to the other half of productivity score in terms of understanding how well technology is enabling all of those productivity experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I may have mastered content collaboration in the cloud, just as an example, but if my connection or device is slow and I have to wait five minutes to open a file from OneDrive or to join a meeting, how can I even use those great collab skills? And Jeremy, I know endpoint management and connectivity is your area of expertise, so why don't you walk us through the technology experiences? Okay, sounds good. So why don't we start with network connectivity? So this is crucial for any online experience. And here we're looking at your connectivity to Exchange, SharePoint, and Teams. Now this map here on the left provides a great visual where performance is good or green and where it's bad or red, as you can see here with these dots. Now if I click into the red dot, on the East Coast US, I can see a rich set of insights and actions for my Philadelphia office. So here you're gonna see that the scores here are much lower than what we saw on the averages. And on the left, you'll see recommendations and actions that again, I can uh, look into the issues or I can take action on them. For example, here it looks like we're backhauling traffic from Philadelphia to Seattle, which isn't good. And I can see this issue is with my connection or if it's with my connection or if others in the city have uh, other similar scores. Because my connection is actually in the bottom 23%, I know that the problem is unique to my organization. It's probably addressable. So now I'm going to continue on the tour and go to Microsoft 365 Apps Health. Now this measure is really about the app experience with the core Office apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and also Outlook. And if they're up to date and on the recommended update channels to really help ensure the best performance, that they have the latest capabilities and security updates. Importantly, if your devices are running supported versions, that's also there as well. So, for example, here I can see that 80% of our devices are now on supported versions. So, now I can take care of the other 20% and get those up to date. And finally, let's look at endpoint analytics. So, here I can see startup performance. So, when I click in, I can see the boot and also the sign in scores along with what might be slowing them down. And something I'm really excited about are the new proactive remediations, which are built-in or custom PowerShell scripts that you can run on a defined schedule to diagnose, then proactively remediate potential issues. So here I can see proactive remediations for common problems like stale network configurations and certificates, uh, group policies, as well as VPN health here. So by the way, we showed a sneak peek of the upcoming capabilities for endpoint analytics with Brad Anderson recently, and you can check that out at aka.ms slash endpoint analytics updates. Thanks, Jeremy. And you just showed us some great examples of how Productivity Score provides visibility, insights, and even recommended actions to help your organization have the best possible experience with Microsoft 365. Really, it's all about giving you the right information to help transform how work gets done and improve technology experiences wherever your people are working or connecting from. 
And it's really great to see all of these recommendations, how everything comes together into one place. But for anyone who's watching and looking to get started, what do you recommend? Well, try it out today and get your score. Go to aka.ms slash productivity score. Or if you want to learn more, you can check out aka.ms slash prod score resources. Thanks, Jared, for joining us today and taking us through a tour of the new productivity score. Be sure to keep watching Microsoft Mechanics for the latest tech updates across Microsoft. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching.